Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Donna Cook and we're going to talk all things rent to own. And Donna is an expert in this category and I'm so happy that she's here to share her knowledge with us. Before we get into it with Donna, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, Donna, thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to join us. Before we get into it, why don't you give us a little bit of a background on who you are and what you do as a real estate investor? Well, thanks for having me, Darren. And I've looked at your podcasts. I love them. And I've used a couple of your strategies uh, from them as well. Uh, hopefully, some I can help somebody else with rent to own. Awesome. Uh, so I'm from the Winnipeg market. I love the Winnipeg market. I've, um, I grew up in a real estate family. My dad was a builder and had long-term rentals. And as my kids were growing up, you know, I had accounting business and a couple of rentals and then got into it heavier in 2009, started flipping. Uh, so far, we've done about 60 some flips, but some of them are flip to sell, flip to, you know, burr strategy. I do some rent to owns that way as well. And uh, did a couple cottage builds and a couple conversions to single family to duplex. And, but right now my biggest strategy, I think, uh, it, I feel is the safest for um, myself and my joint venture partners is the rent to own. So let's talk a little bit about rent to own. Um, why did you, what, what attracted you to this, to this strategy? Well, I took a course and I took one of my flips and changed it into a rent to own. And I liked, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that are nice about it, uh, especially now in today's market, it's a little harder to get a mortgage, you know, mortgage rule changes, you know, down payments, you know, sometimes are hard to uh, save for as far as the rent to own tenant. And then also if they have some credit glitches, we can help them because we do have a lot of um, help within that. We're not just going to say, here's a house and, you know, let them flounder for three years. They, they have to go through a process with this and we check up on them and help them through that. Um, and then as far as the investor side of it, it's very nice safe investment. It feels safe. You know, of course, there's no 100% guarantee in real estate, but, you know, you have plan B, plan C, if the, for some reason it doesn't work out. But, you know, we have someone that wants to be in the house. We have someone that has put a down payment or deposit on it. And we are helping them through the process, usually their families, and they also take care of the house much better. They can improve on it. And they also pay the maintenance costs on the uh, rent own property. Mm -hmm. So different than a standard rental where the landlord is responsible for um, a lot of the repairs and maintenance in a rent to own contract. Often the, the future homeowner, they're responsible for those repairs and maintenance. Yes. And you know, something huge happened, like we're always still giving them houses that have been either renovated by myself or else they are in nice shape to begin with. We don't want something, you know, for the tenant or the investor that's uh, not in good shape. They're in good areas, uh, you know, kind of standard three bedroom, two bath, full basement is what I like to look for. Uh, you know, if anybody would like it. So if for some reason it doesn't work out, but um, we try as much as we can to make sure we have people that are committed to this uh, rental agreement and are going to stick with it for the usually about a three year term. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is you don't have any vacancies. We don't have to worry about that. You don't have one or two months without rent. When we talk about the market being a flat market or an up market or a down market, is there a, is there a market that this strategy works really well in? And is there a market that, that it doesn't work well in? Uh, well, I've never been in a down market. Winnipeg's always up. Um, I, so I don't know what it's like to work in a down market and recommend it because, you know, how are you going to kind of look at what that uh, end price is? And then as far as an investment goes, it doesn't work if it's going down. Uh, you know, our, we have an up market, slow and steady here, um, diverse economy, and it just, seems to work here well. Our, our house prices are affordable like, compared to the rest of Canada. Uh, you know, our average price is about 320 and most of the rent to owns that I'm doing are under 300,000. So mm -hmm. it's a nice price to be able to buy in for the investor, you know, around 60,000 down and, uh, you know, we've got a property. There's three parties in this, in this agreement from what I'm gathering from you. There's 
the, the potential renter future owner. There's you as the sort of investor coordinator, and then you actually have investors that are investing in your transactions as well. So why would somebody need to do rent to own? Well, from the tenant's point of view, uh, they're out of a house uh, into a house that they want to live in. Their kids are now stable in a place, maybe that where they're going to go to school. They are getting help. Uh, some of our people that we've helped never would have fixed their credit if it wasn't for us getting them into their program. And uh, you know, and they're in a house too, like I said, that they can take care of and add to it. You know, get a dog or whatever. Uh, you know, finish off a basement if they want to. Those kind of things. And just, um, I guess stability is huge for them. What's the process, Donna? How are, how are you finding these folks to, to be future uh, owners or how are they finding you? Like what's, what is, what's the process? Do you go and find the property first? Do you find the tenant buyers first? Uh, do you find the investors first? What's your process? Well, it's, it's a balancing act to get all three at once, but you know, I have relationships with investors because I believe that's how you, work with an investor. I don't want to just throw it out on social media saying, hey, look at this. I, I want to talk to people, find out what their values are, what are their goals, and see if they align with mine. And a lot of people love rent to own because we are helping people you know, into a house. And sometimes they've just had something bad happen to them. That's why they're in the credit situation or whatever. Um, as far as a rent to own tenant, I market for them. I have some houses first. Sometimes I've done that. And also mostly I am marketing for the tenant first. And so, you know, social media, Kijiji, that sort of thing. Uh, they go to my website and they can learn about rent to own just right off the website. And then we have the funnel and they have to go through quite a few steps, qualifying steps with us before we'll even look at a house. And then in the end, you know, once the credit advisor has given us the go ahead and a plan for them to do for three years, then we look at what's going to work for them in their price range. And, you know, you want it to be a comfortable price range and not being stressed trying to make payments and, uh, you know, find something that works for their family. And then we start looking for the house. So you were saying, mentioning somebody like a, a credit advisor, is this a mortgage broker? Is this somebody that you have on your team that, that helps uh, analyze where your current tenant buyers are, where they need to be and how they need to get there? I have used uh, mortgage brokers because sometimes mortgage brokers bring me a rent to own tenant. And in that case, they've done some of the qualifying and they will work with the tenant for the three years. Um, other than that, if I'm marketing for them, I have a credit advisor on our team and the rent owned tenant has to pay for that. And I find that they're a little more committed then as well. You know, if they're going to push back for paying 126 for the credit information, then you know they probably aren't the right person because they aren't committed to changing their situation. Mm -hmm. And so the situation is basically they can't qualify for financing in their current state but three years from now, if you help them in that, you know, cleaning up their credit or potentially figuring out something that's uh, allowing them to be denied by the bank, they can, in that three years time that they're renting and, and creating equity in the property, then at the end of that time, they, they can afford to buy this property from you. Yeah, for sure. And then we would have all that information up front and finding out what is that problem? How can we fix it and help them fix it, their situation? So how does this structure of the agreement work? Essentially, are you looking at um, they're renting? Are they renting at market value from from you or you know of that property? Or is it something where you're making money on the split as a as a landlord as a cash flow? And then they're also is, does some of that money go to their future down payment? Or you you mentioned a deposit earlier. What's the the process and the sort of the cash flow? Uh, with the rent to own tenant, they are uh, legally still a tenant. So we do have uh, the rental board uh, lease, and that's the same for three years. We don't change the amount that they pay. Uh, so they do have their market rent, and they pay us market rent, and there's always cash flow on it. So nothing here doesn't cash flow. So we have a decent cash flow on that portion. Um, separately, they have to give us a deposit upfront. 
and then monthly, uh, whatever the balance is they need to get to, let's say, 7% of the purchase price, then between the deposit and over 36 months, they will pay that balance monthly. Uh, some people are at 10%. It depends on their situation, but in general, they're 5% and 2% closing costs. And we are making on the appreciation, the mortgage pay down, and the rental cash flow. And then I manage the whole investment. I am bringing in the rent owned tenant, managing them for the three years, managing the house as well, because I do still want to check up and make sure that house is good. Uh, they are taking care of it. And um, also, you know, the purchase of the house too is, can be a lot of work. And then working with the investor, I, uh, we share the equity um, split and monthly payments and the end um, payout. And I do all the financials and that to go with that. How do you establish your future sale price? Uh, I'm guessing because you're talking about making profits on the appreciation side, uh, you're not selling it uh, to them in year one for the potential, well, you, you're establishing a year three value in year one. And how do you set that? Just really looking at our market, we're using about a 3% appreciation right now. It's not huge, but we know that that is legitimate here. Uh, we, you know, you can still make money on this. We can still make a decent return on it. And I want to be within the safe range too. I don't want to say it's like 6% and then it doesn't appraise for that. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And so it, it's been working out well. So when you, uh, let's say you use that 3% uh, annual increase on the appreciation side, what happens if the market does 10, 12, 15%? Um, do you renegotiate or does the tenant buyer just get to capitalize on that increased value that they, the property has been able to create and you get your guaranteed 3%? Um, who gets to, to capitalize on that uh, upside? Yeah, if it happened to go up that, I mean, that's great for the tenant, but uh, no, we have a contract. We said, this is what we're selling it to you for, and that's what it is. Um, and then that's their safety as well, as we do have a lease option contract with them, and they know right from the beginning what all their payments are and what the purchase price is in the end. What happens if it goes the other way? What happens if the market goes down or stays flat, for instance, and the property doesn't appreciate? Does the tenant buyer have any um, situation where they can, let's say, back out or anything like that? Have you ever had that happen? No, we haven't because it's never gone down here. Uh, that's why I like it here. I've got the stats back to 1977 and every single year the market goes up. Two years we dropped $2,000 and that was it. So that's our history here. Mm -hmm. uh, if for some reason something happened, it went a little lower, we would take a look at it. And that's a conversation with the, um, the um, investor as well. You know, is it a 5,000 less? Well, okay, then we split 2,500 or something and we get a little bit less on the sale or we wait a little bit uh, till it brings it up to that price. You know, it's all about uh, the relationship and uh, let's make it work for everyone. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some sort of uh, situations that may present themselves. So at the end of the three years, what happens if those uh, folks still can't qualify for that purchase? What happens then? We do have it in our contracts that we will just extend it for six months. We will know what's going on with them. You know, like we're following with them all the way through it. And then especially six months out from the purchase price, that's when we're really talking to them and they have to get together with the mortgage broker. And if we know there is a situation, we'll know about it then. Mm -hmm. And we will work with them to work, work it through it. And if it takes a little longer, that's fine. And if for some reason they can't follow through on that transaction, I'm guessing as you have that deposit, that's kind of your security there with uh, you being able to keep that. And then have you had to have a situation where you've had to remove people from the property or has that even come up since so far since you've been doing this? No, I've never had anything bad happen that I had to re uh, remove someone. We do have recourse because they are tenants. And so if they decided not to pay, we have fairly good um, tenancy rules here that we can remove someone fairly quickly for not paying rent. Uh, it's part of the contract and even rental board too. If they're wrecking something, they can be removed. We do have their deposit to pay for any damages. But if for something happened and they did want to move on, decided not to buy, 
we do have that deposit up front. We do refund some of it. So after paying for any cost to get another tenant in or, you know, our holding costs or whatever, then they would get a portion of it back. Can you tell us a little bit about, if you don't mind sharing with us, some, some numbers, like some um, a typical scenario you've got going on? Like what kind of returns are you seeing for your investors on these transactions? Most of the tenants I've had so far buying houses just, you know, under 300,000. We've kind of gone between about 220 to 300 so far. And an investor can, you know, puts the down payment down and secures the mortgage. Usually, you know, it's the down payments around 60,000 and that includes the closing costs. Uh, you know, we share that cost as well. Um, if depending on the split that we're doing, but uh, you know, all our um, investors are getting, let's say between around 14 to 18% for their portion of the investment uh, that's per year. And uh, so far we've had great returns. They've all come in. Don't know if too many people getting 14 to 18 percent in the stock market. (laughs) (laughs) And you don't have to do anything. Uh, I'm taking care of it and uh, it's pretty passive. Is that uh, the biggest, uh, I guess, motivator for you is to really, you know, bringing that element of finding decent returns for your investors, but also a humanitarian sort of way of, of being able to help individuals get into home ownership? It started monetarily. I looked at the numbers and it made sense. That's why I changed that flip to uh, rent to own. But then once I started, you know, working with the families and you get involved and it, it is, it's a really feel good investment. And that's what I've been talking to my investors about. And I'm getting so many people con- contacting me saying, I love this strategy where I can help people. And, uh, and, you know, we're working with people that just sometimes something bad happened and that's why they're in their situation. It's not people that just, you know, went out and spent too much money on their credit cards. <laughs> Are you able to do this in a multifamily setting, Donna? Like, could you do a duplex conversion and then do a rent to own on something like that? Or do you really find that this works well for just straight up single family dwellings? So far, I've only done it on single family. I've looked at possibly doing a duplex. Uh, you know, and just looked at how that strategy would work. But, uh, you know, that's another way to help someone get into an investment situation too, when they get into the house. And the other way I'm helping people too, is like I said, I want to have relationships with my investors. This is a great safe investment for them, especially first time investors. You're not worrying about, um, you know, the uh, repairs and maintenance and they don't have to do anything on it. And like I said, we, look at our values and our goals. And if they align, it's a great, it's a great relationship. What are some uh, pitfalls that, that investors should be aware of when they're looking at getting into rent to own? I guess probably the biggest one is if the person walks away and if they do, but I feel like, you know what it's like having rental properties or whatever, there's so many other avenues you can go. If they tenant decides to leave, we do have their deposit to pay for our fees to go ahead and get another rent owned tenant. So we can just can you continue, go ahead, do another three years. Uh, if we decide what we could rent it out, uh, just do it as a straight rental, change the use if we wanted to, um, possibly convert it to a basement suite or sell it. Those are all our options and we can discuss it and look at what's the best option for both of us. What is your favorite uh, thing that you're doing outside of, of uh, rent to owns and, and maybe even outside of real estate investing right now in, in your life and in your business? Uh, personal ve- development's huge for me. I love doing that. I like Tony Robbins uh, doing all those. I have some masterminds, um, yours as well. And uh, yeah, we're uh, excited to have you on. I know. I'm looking forward to that. And I belong to a couple others. And I've just started a ladies group. I got a big feedback that uh, there seems to be some need for ladies just getting together and talking real estate and what can we do with this and. Uh, So it's uh, freedom, lifestyle, health, wealth, and real estate. And I've just only had two calls so far, but uh, everybody's enjoying it and uh, we'll see where it goes. That's great. I love it. I love the holistic approach to, you know, just creating a better life for yourself and for the people around you. And I think that's a 
probably the number one motivator, you know, in, in terms of why we get into real estate investing. And I think that's, uh, that's phenomenal. You're, you're creating all of those uh, groups and circles that you're surrounding yourself with people that have similar ideas. Yeah. Um, you know, I, to me, family is the most important family, spending time with them and your health. And, you know, if you don't have your health, you can't enjoy your wealth. Yeah, to me, it's all together. <laughs> For sure. Well, Donna, thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to, to join me. I think this has been hugely valuable. And I know I, I, I haven't personally done a rent to own. And it's something that I need to start of look into potentially more because it is one of those strategies that I find investors are finding great success with it. Um, I think when you get a system set up, it seems relatively easy uh, to be able to reproduce that system. So uh, thanks so much for imparting your wisdom. And I'm going to leave your information in the description below so that people can reach out to you if they have any more questions or if they're interested in, in potentially investing with you. So thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to join us. If you guys enjoyed the session with Donna, go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say, Donna, thanks again for being here today. Uh, I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey. I look forward to connecting with you soon on our mastermind. And I hopefully our paths will cross sooner than later. And all the best to you in your real estate investing business. I just wanted to add one thing. You're asking about rent to own. It is a fairly involved process. And if you do have a property you want to do a rent to own on, you could send it to me and I could do the qualification for you. And because I have all the contracts and we do have the system and you can take care of your property, but I can take care of your tenant from here. Amazing. It's a great offer. I might take you up on that. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Donna. Okay. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.